Hey guys, it's October 10th and I'm back with another video. And before I go any further, I really want to apologize for my allergies. Russia attempted a counterattack from Crimea in the direction of Terni. However, it was repelled and they were forced to retreat even further from the lines towards Crimea than they were before. Russia's been setting up defenses around this city because losing it would be devastating. If Ukraine is able to take Crimea, it would give them full control of this section of the P-66 highway. They'd likely be able to break through these underdefended settlements and, and start threatening Rubiz Rubizhny. Oh my god. And start threatening Rubizhny. Uh, yep. They could potentially advance up to the Borovic River right here, which would allow them to hit Savatove's flanks from multiple sides, which would severely threaten its position. Kremina is a very important stronghold for Russia, and losing it would lead to a similar collapse to my bank account. Going from there further south, we have some more news on the Zaporizhia front. Russian forces again tried an, ass an assault on... Hulk Hogan, Holyapol, and it was stopped by Ukrainian artillery. Ukraine then advanced south to the positions above Polohi. If all of these settlements come into Ukrainian control, Polohi would be at serious risk. Russia likes to defend these lines of settlements along highways. There's one near Polohoi and another one in this region right here. That's what they're currently doing in Savatove, to the south and north. It's what they did in Laman, and that's also what they were doing in northeast Kherson. But this strategy can be easily exploited. Ukraine did a successful push at Zolta Balka and Davidiv Breed right here, which allowed them to break through the line and quickly encircle this whole region, forcing them to retreat backwards. Something similar could happen in this region if they're able to maneuver their way through these two lines of cities and advance to possibly Bilmak. They could potentially expand outwards to Dubrova. How many Dubrovas are in Ukraine? And attempt to encircle the lines like how they did in Kherson. The key to breaking these lines of cities is to outflank them. Like if they're able to, what? That's not a dotted line. If they're able to push past and around them, that would force them to retreat from them. And when they're retreating, then then Ukraine just follows them relentlessly. If we look at a topographic map, this whole, what, if we, what, why do I have to be zoomed out? Oh, <laughs> what's going on with my software? What, what's happening? What? Just get in the folder, get in the folder. Oh my God, this is so frustrating. <laughs> oh, I hate this. Come on. So Ukraine can pretty easily pursue them in this region since it is mostly flat. There's a couple higher elevated regions, but that's it. Stop. Stop. All my arrows are disappearing. All right, before my program breaks any further, that's all I got for you guys today. See ya. Hey guys, I forgot to mention this when I was recording, but I have just launched a channel membership thing through YouTube. If you want to be a big man, bigger man, or bigness, I didn't think about the order there. You'll get some extra perks related to my channel. At the entry level tier, I'll reply to all of your comments, I'll shout you out at the end of the video, and, and you can vote on polls to see what videos you want to see me make. Second tier, you get all that stuff, but you get early access to new videos as well. With the third tier, I can show you my personal YouTube channel and just some pictures from stuff that I do in my normal day life. And everything before. I didn't want to put all the good perks behind too much money. If you don't feel like donating, that's completely fine. You'll still get the same amount of content. But it, to all my big men, I love you.